Hello guys, so today's tutorial is a continuation of the last tutorial and what we're going to do, like I said, is first off, is first off, make this be attached to whatever it collided, like so. Uh, we're going to also instantiate a line that appears in here between the player and the block and we're going to make the the rope shrink. Anyways, let's get started. So open the grappling hook script and first off we're going to connect the anchor point to the point that we should that should be connected. So here we haven't defined the joint connected anchor. So just let us put here joint dot connected anchor. And right now the anchor is zero zero. So as you can see, if it gets attached into any game object, it will be in the center of it. And if we want the joint to be anchored to exactly exactly the point on the surface that we want. We want a, we have to create a vector that points from the center of the object to whatever we hit, and that's very simple. Just find the hit dot point minus the center of the object. So to do that, just type here hit dot point minus the center of the object. And that will be a new vector to hit dot collider dot transform dot position. Dot x and the second parameter is, will be this, but dot y. Bam, and now this part is done. And now we're going to also instantiate a line between the player and wherever it collided. So in Unity, I could create here in the player a line render component, but but there's a little issue that I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to create a line out of the player. So Control Shift 10 to create a new game object, name it line, and I'm going to give it a line render component, so line render. And now with this done, let me show you, let me put this appearing in the scene. So, and the issue is, as you can see, now we can see the line, but sometimes the player changes its x scale to minus 1, and if we did change the, y, the x scale of the line render, it should it it should stop appearing, so we can't put the line on the player. And we're going to put it here. And let me show you what this holds. First off, it holds this start width and end width, which which is just the width of the line. And it holds positions, and we can put several, but we'll only need two: one for the player and one for whatever it grabbed. And we also use the material, and that's basically it. Anyways, in the grappling hook script, we're going to have to create a reference for this line render. So, going to the grappling hook script and put here public line render line. And with this, and now in Unity, going to the player, and we'll see that there's here a component in the grappling hook script for the line. So, just grab the line and put it there. And now we have a reference for the line. And now in our script, we want to change these points of the line. So let's get to it. So, first off, when, whenever we start, we want the line to be disabled. So line.enable equals false. Then, whenever we press the, the key E, we want the line to be enabled. So line.enabled equals true and we want to set some positions of the line so just put line dot set position and there's and you can set it by index so by this index over here we have the index 0 and the index 1 so just put index 0 to be transform dot position and put the index 1 to be the hit dot point, which is whatever we are grabbing to, and of course you want this position to be to be changing all the time. So we're going to create here the if input dot get key key code e. If this is true, then I want to set a position zero to be equal to the position of the player. And now we should see a, a pink line following 
us. So as you can see now, you can see the pink line. And before we going to before we change the color of the line, I'm going to also add a, a thing that decreases the distance of it. So first off, put here line dot enable equals false. And I'm going to put here a thing that decreases the distance of the joint with time. So if so, and we're going to decrease it until a certain distance. So if joint dot distance is bigger than let's say one float for instance you can put here whatever you want then you want the, the joint dot distance to be minus equals the step and let's put here public float step step and then we can put it equal to 0 0.2 floats for now else we want to disable the line and the joint so line dot enable equals false and joint dot enable equals false and right now you'll see that will be pushed into the air so as you can see and for now it's working fine now let's give it a color to make the line I think we actually have to make a texture and I don't have a I don't made a rope texture because I'm lazy and so what we're going to use is one of these sprites that I already had here for instance this platform sprite over here you know or this can also be used and I'm going to actually use, use the the orange one so so first off make a copy of it because this is for sprites and this will be a texture so let's make it a texture by making it a texture and it will be fine now we want to apply this to a material, so I'm going to create a material. Where the material was created? Okay, here it is. And I'm going to put here a uh, rope material. And to make to make it display correctly, what you have to do, and this thing I didn't know, I had to go to the to some guy had to check in the internet. You have to go into the shader, particles, alpha blended, and then here just select that the texture that we created this texture and now just apply it to the line render so find the line and drag that material into here into the materials so just drag into the materials and you'll see that it displays there and it's a bit uh, stretched so all I have to do is to make here the tiling be smaller so that it gets less stretched as you can see but anyways we're going to take care of that in a moment and one thing that I actually forgot was to make the alpha is transparent on the texture thing on and make the ref mode from clamp to repeat and this way it, it will repeat itself along the line and now if I press E you'll see that the line gets displayed but as you can see it's a bit weird and it's because of the tiling so the tiling, I made the tilings big, so just put it one by one, and it, now it will be fine. And now I'm just going to be a bit nitpicky because, as you can see, the the line texture itself is getting is shrinking, isn't maintaining its ratio. And if you wanted to maintain its ratio, uh, you have to to add a script to the line renderer, and that's what I'm going to do. So let's get started. I'm going to add a component to the line which holds the line render component. So new script and call it rope ratio and this will make the rope texture remain the same always. And as you may see over here, all we have to do is to change the tiling.x by code to make it always have the same size. And you may not know but the way this works is linear with the distance so the bigger the distance is the linearly we have to make the tiling a little bit smaller because bigger the distance the more stretch it gets in this script what we're going to do first is to change the tiling of this texture and to do that all I have to do is get the components line render and this will get the component line render in this game object which is a line 
and we want to get a material, which is the material that we added, and we want to change the texture dot the main texture scale. So main texture scale. And this is basically the tiling. The main texture scale is the tiling, X and Y. So it will have this will be a vector two, so I'm going to put here new vector two, and I will make it equal to something in the X and one F one float in the Y. And now we're going to calculate here the x, which will be a scale x, something like that. That's a float, so float scale x. And I want this to depend on the distance, so I'm just going to put here a vector free dot distance. And I have to put vector free because the line renders are in 3D. So vector free dot distance. And well, what do I want to put here? I want to calculate the distance between the the points on the line, the these two points, the element zero and the element one. But unfortunately, you don't have a, a command similar to this one that gets that point. Nope. So you basically have to save it somehow, and we'll do that in a moment. Anyways, I want to be one of the points will be the player, so I'm going to put here a public game object, public game object player, and the first point will be equal to the player dot transform dot position, and the second point we have to get from this script over here because in this script, whenever we set the position over here, uh, we also want to send information to this script to give us that position. So I'm going to put here public vector pre grab position and put here the grab position. And now, like I said, we have to, to make this script change the grab position. So, what I'm going to do is in the grappling hook script, I want to access the line. As, and as you may know, we have already accessed the line here in some places. The line is not it's not the game object, it's this component, but Unity lets us from this component access any other component in that same game object, basically access its siblings. So just put here line.get component and the component that you are looking for has this name, so rope ratio. And you want to make the grab position which you have to make public be equal to the hit dot points dot points and now the grab position will change and now we are done and now if I hit play you will see that everything is working fine oops I forgot to to make the player a player so just drag the player into here so find the player who is in there and hopefully now it's working fine and it will not shrink and as you can see it isn't shrinking the texture remains the same all the way and as you can see it's a bit too small and we can change that by adding a ratio and we're going to do that, to that in a second so just put here public float ratio and you can multiply by this or divide by this and to divide because this way the bigger it is the bigger will be the texture because this is inversely proportional and I'm going to put the ratio at maybe let's see 8 and if I play as you can see now the rope is not as as shrink down as it was and if I put it a little smaller it gets a little bit better and let maybe let's maybe see 3 okay 3 is ideal and as you can see, now you have a proper working grappling hook. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next tutorial.